Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. Today we're going to take a look at the idea of do you need a new camera? Since a lot of mirrorless has been coming out to the market, Canon has just introduced uh, its mirrorless and in next uh, week's episode I'm going to make a detailed breakdown of that. So before all this uh, camera hits the market shelf, you have to ask yourself do you actually need to buy it? So let's dive right into it. Now what we actually hope with every new camera when we buy it is something like this. It's like you know we're gonna get better and better photographs like super high detail images and great quality. This is what we expect and if you go anywhere online like where there's specific interest in high megapixel cameras or anything that is above 12 megapixel they will try to show something like this you know you can keep going up and up. Now so this is what we expect. Now is this what we get? Short answer, no. There is a very serious curve in life which is called diminishing return. This applies to everything in life. Now, this is a very simple graph. So think of it this way. Like if you are spending money, little bit of money, every amount of money you spend on top of it, let's say you classify that in X. So let's say you spend 3X money, you get 3X the performance. Awesome. You spend 10X, you do not get 10X performance. This is very crucial. This is the part that you have to initially understand. A $2,000 camera or $3,000 camera, it's gonna be very good if built by a good manufacturer with good intentions. Like if they are uh, you know, inherently blocking that camera so they can sell a higher end product, this is why they are doing it. They inherently know, like let's say Canon C series lineup, that uh, video camera they make they are good cameras by uh, all definitions however they do not justify the price they ask as in if you take a very good dslr like a canon 5d old one uh, that came with the facility of full hd video recording in full frame and all that old it was used in movies as crash cams basically and uh, wherever this is used in the movie it was used in marvel movies and many other movies there was using as a uh, you know wherever you're gonna see something very tight corners uh, sometimes people use this sort of dslr to blend in into their very very expensive camera but how this can be done that is the crucial aspect a very good dslr versus a very good movie camera does not have that day and night difference now, day and night difference used to be true. Like if you can uh, think of it this way, if I give you a mono soundtrack, you can easily tell the difference between mono and stereo. Awesome. Now stereo to 5.1, you are like, okay, now it's a bit more uh, surround and all that. Now try to tell difference between 5.1 soundtrack versus 10.2 uh, soundtrack. It becomes uh, like so muddy that you can't tell them apart. This happens with everything, including cameras. Like if you uh, get a good, like C200 cameras or uh, specifically Sony camcorders, high-end camcorders that are used for uh, video production or documentaries. From them to very expensive ca uh, Red Epic cameras, the difference between them is there, absolutely there. But it's not in the same multiplication factor as it is the cost. Like it's, uh, let's say a Sony high-end camera will cost you, let's say $5,000. Awesome. You have to spend roughly 50,000 to get a full-fledged uh, Red Epic camera. Now, does it have that much better? Like, you know, that many times 10x better quality? No. This is the crucial aspect. This is why uh, I want to specify this diminishing return curve. This applies to everything in life. Now, more money does equal better performance. A Red Epic camera will like wipe the floor with a Sony professional, you know, video cam. However, it won't be like okay like you know you, you can see them apart like you know tell them apart by you know blind test like if some good color grading in the uh, color grading is done you can easily pass it off and many movie manufacturers do that like actual movies i'm talking marvel movies i'm talking dc movies many time um, specifically if they have some uh, tricky situation where they cannot just get in their uh, film cameras they will use a di digital camera and if they have a digital camera they don't have infinite budget they might use a cheaper camera and it happens it's quite common and the reason why you don't spot it like why isn't it look jarring is simply because of that like the gap between uh, let's say a very high-end video camera that is used for production versus a gap between a very high-end production camera that is used for let's say news anchoring or documentary the gap between them it's there absolutely there but it's not that much like you, many of you have heard this especially after Nikon's release of Nikon mirrorless is that Nikon is gonna give you 10 bit now many of you know like 8 bit to 10 bit is a huge jump now I'll ask you uh, what is the jump between 
10 bit to 12 bit. Now, of course, mathematically it's a lot, but it reaches a point where you cannot tell the difference apart. That's the crucial aspect. Like going from two to, uh, 252 levels of gradation to freaking uh, 1024 gradation, that's a lot of jump. Now, from 1000 to any point you go higher than that, will it help? Yes. But will it help proportionately? No. This is the, you know, Achilles heel of all our electrons. Now, these two photos that I'm showing you, now, if you can't tell them apart on this uh, TV, don't worry about it. Like, even if somebody showed you, like, in real life, unless you spend a lot of time, you will not be able to tell. One is 12, one is 36. So, as you can see, like, there is difference. Like, there is a difference where you can easily tell, like, feathers have more detail, uh, grass specifically has more detail. However, it's not that much. However, your file size went almost triple the size. That's the crucial aspect. This is the aspect that I want you guys to be aware of. That paying more will get you more. Yes, but it will not give you multiple times more. Like going from a cheap uh, APS-C size uh, DSLR to a good mirrorless, let's say Nikon Z series or a Sony A7 Mark III will be a night and day difference but from sony mark 3 to like something uh, higher than that will not give you that kind of wow factor that kind of like holy crap this is amazing so be mindful of this there is a point of diminishing return you have to be wise and you have to cut your spending here now if you have infinite money or if you are working in the biggest production ever you are working in like you know uh, you are make, trying to make thanos you want to make sure you spend as much as you can so for this reason be mindful of this curve diminishing return now how does this apply to us as a photographer like all the lenses that you buy for a camera it's not perfect specifically let's say you bought a, a nikon d3100 or latest d edition d edition or uh, d5000 series i really like because they have flip out skin and you're like okay this is 24 megapixel but i'm not happy with the quality are you not happy with the quality because the sensor is shitty or you are uh, not happy with the quality because the lens is so this is very crucial aspect. You have to be mindful, lenses are not perfect. So even though you may have 24 megapixel, you may have pixel density that is very high per square inch on your sensor, it may not you know, uh, spread its wing as it if the lens is not sharp enough. Please get a good quality lens. Please get a like, you know, like one I'm using. Now this is not the best out there, but it's a good one. It's definitely multiple times better than a kit lens. It's 17 to 55, uh, f 2.8 constant uh, Sigma lens. It's not that expensive, but the difference between this lens and a kit lens is night and day. Kit lens is just a recovery lens, it's a backup lens. Keep it in your uh, camera bag just in case your main lens breaks or things like that happen. Don't rely on that because it will inherently have a dull output on your image sensor. Now, DxO Mark, when they were not bankrupt, they were doing this constantly with uh, newer cameras. Now they are not doing it as often as they used to. Is They used to devise a mathematical data point which they called perceived megapixel. So if you have a 24 megapixel Nikon D5300, uh, everything is awesome, but you do not get 24 megapixel out of it. If you pair it up with a point, uh, basically the included kit lens, you would barely get 9 to 10 megapixel out of it. 9 to 10 usable megapixel out of it. So if there was a mathematically perfect 10 megapixel camera, you will be able to compare that. Now you're like, what happened to my other, your lenses were blurry. Now, are there lenses that are perfect? No, physics does not allow you to do that. Now you will have lenses that will give you more and more quality if you spend more and more. That's why Zeiss lenses are used in movies. That's why like, uh, telescopes that we use, uh, the lenses that are used in NASA's test mission, it's so high end. The lenses that they were discarding, they were 10 times better than what lenses you can get from Zeiss or uh, Sigma or things like that. They were discarding that kind of lens. We can make lens that are ludicrously precise, the, that can almost give you 24 megapixel out of your APC, but it will cost $50,000. So suffice to say, you ha also have to understand, there also there is a uh, you know diminishing return curve. So lenses are not right so please make sure you get a lens that have at least uh, 60 to 80 percent of uh, perceived megapixel use dxo mark now of course uh, lenses are kind of old tech at this point and not too many new lenses are coming out that is groundbreaking so you can easily test it out so this way you will get the idea that is your lens holding you back or your camera sensor really needs to go up now cost to sharpness ratio now this is a very good image this is what i used to grow up with like this sort of video images that uh, came out of my mobile cam now as you can see now we are here 8 megapixel now the difference from this to this is a uh, groundbreaking but i will ask you this can you tell the difference between from 
8 megapixel to 15 megapixel the answer would be yes now 15 to 32 no 32 to 50 no like at that point starting to like there is more sharpness yes in every scenario there is more detail there is more sharpness but it is uh, is it there uh, that much that is going to justify the storage space that you have to pay for it is it going to justify the cost of the hardware no this is what you have to be crucial about before buying a new camera please make sure did you actually maxed out your old camera now of course you might may buy APS-C sensor camera just to you know get your hands on DSLR just to figure out how things work and then you are always planning to you know okay I'm gonna move to full frame of course then do that but be mindful from if you go from mobile camera to APS-C size DSLR the switch will be good now if you go from mobile to full frame that's a day and night but if you go from APS-C to full frame the gap is not that big specifically if you did not use kit lens if you used good quality lens heck you can actually compete with uh, proper full frame cameras that's why be mindful and you have to understand tech it has reached this point so many of you might be old enough to remember that there used to be SD card of 64 megabyte. I actually used to have a card, SD card that was 64 megabytes, then came gigabyte. But realize we haven't reached a point where there is a petabyte SD card yet. Like in principle there is, but that's barely one petabyte of useful space. So as you can see, like tech is also slowing down. We no longer is getting, you know, two times, three times, five times, uh, you know, the storage capacity that we used to. Like, heck, see the cost of 128 gigabyte SD card versus 256 gigabyte SD card. The price goes, uh, price is not 2x, it's almost 2.3x. You go from uh, 256 to 512, it, it directly starts to go six times more expensive. So, for this reason, do not be like angry at the camera manufacturer. Everything has reached this point, including your cars. They cannot, like, Earlier days, the mileage used to be in single digits, like 10 km per liter, 20 km per liter. Now we are reached a point 35 to 40. Can we go any higher? In principle, yes, but in reality, no. Like it's the same point. They can make an engine that can give you more than that, but it will cost so much that people won't buy it. So point of diminishing return affects us all. Be mindful of it. Tech has reached the point. That's why you're, uh, the, I used to have this uh, mobile cam and I loved it. And it was like Sony Ericsson K810i the best mobile cam i ever used to this day because it had xeon flash so it was awesome now this was 3 megapixel now you can get 12 to 13 megapixel but why you're not getting uh, 50 megapixel even though nikon uh, why i'm saying nikon nokia released a 50 megapixel mobile phone but it wasn't giving you as much as you were costing them so that reason we are settled down to this for this reason be mindful Now, what could help you? Like, let's say you have the money and you want to spend it, what could actually help? These are the few things that could really help you out. First is the dual card slot. Now, many of you may not do wedding shooting. Many of you do not do some things where it's like, you know, mission critical to have data redundancy. No problem. But as I already told you, the card size versus the card cost is not proportional. So 256 gigabyte card, you can buy two 256 gigabyte card for much less price than you will buy one 512 GB card. So for that reason, having dual slots like this helps you bypass that cost issue. Heck, you might be doing uh, something mission critical like wedding photography, wedding videography where you cannot afford to lose or at least you want to reduce your probability of losing the file. These will help you out. Then you can have flip out screen. Now this will be crucial. If you, if you are a vlogger, if you are a YouTuber like me as I am doing right now, flip out screen uh, I could not even imagine using this uh, DSLR as my primary camera if it did not have this. So, and flip out screen with the touch screen, that's double awesome. Now, EVF, this is the new big thing in the market as we speak to you because of the mirrorless technology. EVF will give you night and day performance difference, not because your sensor has gotten better, simply because you will know what you're shooting. You will know whether you are overexposing. You will know whether you are underexposing right the moment you are looking at through the viewfinder. So for that reason, people, hit rate goes much higher up specifically if you are an amateur like if you want to do manual setting you need a feedback loop where there in a dslr there is no feedback loop you have to take a photo then look at it and then which we call chimping uh, uh, you know chimping that you always have to do in evf you don't have to do that and many mirrorless camera have what's called in-body image stabilization so they also uh, make sure your images come out sharp or simple by the fact that it's vibration compensated for more axis than a lens can provide lens can barely do two axis x y 
something like this now uh, sensor can do those two axes plus it can your pitch roll things like that so for that reason they will give you much better hit rate ratio than your other counterparts now input and outputs are very crucial specifically if you want to do something uh, video related to your dslr like does it have a headphone out does it have a, a mic input does it have a hdm clean hdmi output uh, does it have usb charging so for all those things will really make your life better than you know buying a camera that has higher megapixel these things will really instantaneously make your photography better so you can spend your money on these things but be mindful megapixel count we have reached a point where uh, we might be seeing uh, next generation of dslrs that will uh, for full flame will be maxed out to 36 and uh, after that there will be some high end megapixel camera like 50 or 60 but can will we go f higher than that obviously camera manufacturer have to do that but will we see uh, mind blowing results after that no so this was my presentation on camera equipments do you need to really buy a new camera i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't dislike it and leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode although in the next episode i'm making canon mirrorless so the stay tuned for that please subscribe and press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching